You're watching InfoSec Bytes, a flash course in information security for journalists. We're based at the Centre for Investigative Journalism in London and supported by the Logan Foundation. This is a tutorial on how to install and use Tor Browser, a specialised browser that uses Tor to allow you to surf the internet anonymously. This video is provided for information only. It cannot replace the advice of a trained security professional. If lives or safety depend on your security, please seek the advice of an expert. This is a video on how to install Tor Browser on a Windows computer. If you have a Mac instead, you can click or tap on the pop-up message and then choose the Mac video to watch that. There's also an overview video explaining what Tor is and how it works, which you can access in the same way. If you want to keep watching this video, stay tuned. We're using Windows 8 here, but the same procedure will work on Windows 7 or 10. Before you go any further, you should know about the security limitations of Windows. Microsoft does a lot of work trying to keep Windows secure from viruses and exploits, but the system is not designed for maximum privacy. A lot of its features can undermine or compromise your privacy, like sharing your Wi-Fi network with your contacts, or tracking your activity for advertising purposes. Windows 10, in particular, has some very serious privacy flaws such as taking a record of everything you type and sending it all to Microsoft. If you're using Windows 10, before you go any further, you should visit the link in the description to find out how to turn this feature off. This tutorial is provided to show how to browse the web anonymously by using Tor Browser, but Tor Browser doesn't solve all of Windows' problems. If you're a journalist working on sensitive material, Windows might not be suitable for your needs. You may want to look into using an operating system that has been designed with security and privacy in mind, such as Tails, or Cubes, or Subgraph. Keep an eye out for InfoSec Bytes videos about these systems in future. We're going to download and install Tor Browser first. Now, we're assuming that you're not in a situation where simply downloading the Tor Browser will mark you as suspicious. You're about to visit the Tor Project website to download the software. If you live in a country where using Tor is illegal or likely to identify you to the authorities, you must remember that this first step, downloading the Tor browser, is not protected by Tor because you don't have it installed yet. You should check whether it is legal to use Tor in your country before you use it, just to make sure that the mere fact of using it won't place you in harm's way. We're going to assume that you want to go ahead. Open your current browser, it can be Firefox, or Chrome, or the native Windows browser, it doesn't matter. Go to the Tor website, so type in torproject.org, and press enter. The Tor Project website will load. You can read all about Tor on here if you want, but we want to download the Tor browser. So click here on Download Tor. It will detect that you're using Windows and offer you the Windows versions. If for some reason it doesn't show you the Windows versions, it should give you the option to go to the Windows versions over here. You'll also notice this link to the SIG, or signature for the download. This allows you to verify that your download is genuine, making sure someone hasn't given you a fake version of the software. To keep this tutorial simple, we're not going to go into signatures, but you can click on What's This to read all about how to use this feature if you want. Click on Download Tor Browser. Choose to save the file to your Downloads folder and wait while the file downloads. Once it's finished, head to the Downloads folder. Find the .exe file. It should begin with Tor Browser install. Double click it. Select your language here and press OK. Now you choose the install location. It suggests your desktop and that's a good place for it, so click Install. Wait while the installer unpacks all the necessary files. Now you'll see this screen. It will ask you if you want to run Tor Browser and whether you want to add Start Menu and Desktop Shortcuts. For now, we will untick Run Tor Browser, but leave Add Start Menu and Desktop Shortcuts ticked. And now we will click Finish. You will now notice that a desktop shortcut has been created which is how you should launch Tor Browser in future. There's also a folder on your desktop called Tor Browser. That's actually all of the files you need to run it. Tor Browser is basically a portable installation. 
you can copy this folder onto your USB flash drive, and then you can bring Tor Browser around with you and launch it on any Windows computer you use. Let's start up Tor Browser by clicking on the desktop shortcut. The first time you launch it, you will see this startup screen. It asks you to choose between making a direct connection to the Tor network or to use an alternative method of connecting to Tor. Basically, you would need the second option if you live in a country or institution where Tor is blocked, or in a situation where it would draw attention to you to connect directly to the Tor network. The second option requires some technical know-how, such as how to configure a Tor bridge relay, which necessitates that you actually know of a bridge relay, so this is something we're not going to go into in this tutorial. But if you think you might need to do this, the wizard will direct you to some instructions which will be of help. We're just going to choose the first option, which is, I would like to make a direct connection to the Tor network. So we're clicking Connect. You'll now get this little Tor status window, as Tor connects to the Tor network and starts up. Sometimes this takes a little bit of time, so be patient. And eventually, you'll see this screen. This is the Tor Browser home screen. You'll see this screen every time you start up Tor Browser. You're now using Tor Browser, and if you've ever used Firefox, it will be very familiar to you because Tor Browser is actually based on the code of Firefox and works in a very similar way. Use it as you would another browser. Type in addresses here, browse web pages, and click links, all is normal. Let's just have a look at Tor working so that you can see it in action. From the home screen, there's a link to test Tor network settings. Click that, and it will take you to check.torproject.org, which is an address you can always go to to check if Tor is working or not. There we see, congratulations, this browser is configured to use Tor, and it will tell you the IP address you appear to have, the one that you've been given by Tor. As a test, let's set Firefox side by side with Tor browser and compare. So let's go to check.torproject.org. Now, we've censored this IP address because it's ours, but take it from us, they're different. The normal browser on the right shows the real IP address, whereas the Tor browser shows a new anonymous IP address. And as you can see, Firefox fails the Tor check, whereas Tor browser does not. You can even check where the IP is by going to a site which geolocates your IP address. And as you can see, the real IP address is in London because that's where we're filming this video but the Tor browser is clearly accessing the site from an exit node in Switzerland because it is a Swiss IP address. As a matter of fact, on Tor browser you can actually routinely change your IP address whenever you want to. To do this, click on the little onion icon here. You'll see two options. The second one, new Tor circuit for this site, will keep all of your tabs open and stay on the site you're on, but will refresh your Tor circuit. So, as we keep pressing that, you'll see that the IP address changes each time. The first option, New Tor Identity, is a bit like that, but it completely closes all of your tabs and starts Tor Browser again with a new IP address. Use this if you want to wipe the slate clean, log out of anything you're logged into, and use Tor completely fresh. You might want to do this, for instance, where you've just logged out of a web account and want to log into a different account, but don't want to use the same IP address because you don't want to correlate the two accounts. Also in this menu is Security Settings. In here, Tor has a little slider that allows you to ramp up the security settings on Tor Browser for extra protection. By default, the slider is at the lowest setting, but if you're concerned, you can slide up to progressively enhance the security of Tor Browser. This normally entails turning off support for a bunch of different web technologies, like JavaScript, which make the web more usable, but which can be used to compromise your anonymity. If you go to high security, certain things you're used to on the web, like playing videos on YouTube, might become a little less convenient. And also on this menu is an option to check for Tor Browser updates. You can click on this to check if there is a software update. The developers of the Tor project are constantly updating the code of Tor Browser to make it more secure and to add new features and to fix software bugs. So you'll want to keep your Tor Browser up to date to keep it secure. If your Tor Browser is out of date and needs to be updated, you will also be informed of this on the Tor Browser home screen, which is the first thing you see when you start it up. If you're told you need an update, click on the onion icon and then click on Check for Tor Updates and the wizard will automatically download the updated version of Tor. And when it's finished, it will prompt you to restart Tor Browser, 
so that it can apply the update and launch you into the updated version. Click on Restart Tor Browser to do this. You'll see the update process take place, and then Tor Browser will start again and give you a screen like this, telling you that Tor Browser has now been updated and giving you a list of the changes that have been made in the update. There are a bunch of do's and don'ts to using Tor Browser, such as don't use browser extensions or plugins because they can give away your identity, and do use the HTTPS versions of websites to make sure that your data remains private as it traverses the Tor network, and don't open documents you've downloaded using Tor unless you're absolutely certain they are safe because some documents can connect to the internet outside of Tor and thereby give away your IP address. Also, throughout this tutorial, to get the best possible view, we've been using Tor Browser full screen, but for maximum privacy, it is recommended you use Tor Browser without resizing the window. These guidelines and more are explained in much more detail on the Tor Project website, and we recommend you read them thoroughly before doing anything too adventurous on Tor Browser. But now that you're up and browsing the internet anonymously with Tor Browser, that's it for this tutorial on Tor Browser for Windows. If you want to watch the Tor Browser for Mac tutorial, or if you would like to watch the overview video on what Tor is and how it works, click or tap on the pop up message and choose your video now. Thanks for watching InfoSec Bytes. If you found this video useful, please share it widely with your colleagues and co workers. To support the Centre for Investigative Journalism with a donation, please visit tcij.org forward slash donate. And if you would like to watch our other videos, please go to infosecbytes.org or subscribe to our channel below.